Hey everybody, it is Lisa with True North Homeschool Academy and I'm here today with Tamara Poole. So if you've been around True North at all, you know Tamara and you know she's a phenomenal educator and excited to share some of the classes that she's going to be teaching this year, which is Latin 1, Back to Latin 1, yay, um, Old Testament, New Testament survey and um, okay, I'm getting, I keep getting the name confused, but it's ancient Ancient, Rome, ancient, ancient Roman or classical Roman studies, ancient Roman studies with national Latin exam prep. Yeah. So that's kind of a combo class. So super excited to share with you about that brand new class to us. Um, but Tamara, so glad you're here again. Um, we don't live too far away, but we never see each other in person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Two hours. It seems like a lot when you're busy though, right? <laughs> um, so for those of, um, of anybody who's watching who don't know you, share a little bit about your family and your homeschooling journey because you homeschooled for a while. I did. Um, so I have three children who are now 25, 23, and 21. The first two are 17 months apart. So this is that time of year when it seems like everyone's two years apart, but they're not. So I had three kids in four years. Um, I know in the homeschool world that is a very small family, but um, that's what we could do. <laughs> Um, and so we homeschooled from the beginning all the way through to graduation. And, uh, and so, um, and I still, uh, because of, of COVID and the location of the schools of my children's choice, they were home for most of their college schooling. And so, um, I got to be involved in that as well, which was really, really fun. So, uh, yeah, and they're all they're all doing adult things at this point, right? Like they all, are. One all. is um, one has his applications going out to med schools right now, and prayers for that. Um, the other one is um, doing debt repair. So he travels uh, doing debt repair. He's currently in Kentucky, and I was at a homeschool conference, um, college conference, just last week, and it just so happened that. He came to Kentucky the day before I was leaving Kentucky. And so we were able to meet for dinner. And you said and dent, D -E -N -T. dent, dent, as in when <laughs> storms come through and damage a fleet of cars, like um, either people's cars or in an auto car lot or a rental car lot. This one's a currently a rental car lot. Yeah. Um, they go in and they repair. So yeah. he does all the work where he's taking apart the inside of the car so the other crew can come in and push the dents out. And wow. then he puts the car back together again. Wow. Okay. And he also helps with some management parts of that. Mm -hmm. He did go to college, um, but um, when it switched to online, he yeah. didn't like it anymore. So he still has a senior year to finish up at some point. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, he was studying uh, multimedia communications uh, with an cool. emphasis in photography. So yeah. Yeah. stuff he can do on the side anyway. Right. Yeah. Very cool. And then what's your, what's your daughter? My name? daughter will be a senior this year uh, at Drake University, and she is majoring in art and music. So her emphasis in art is um, watercolor yeah. um, and pastel. And then uh, her emphasis in music is piano. Very nice. Very cool. Your kids are so smart and so creative. Um, All of our kids are smart and creative. They are. Yeah, it's true. It's true. I mean, that is one of the great things about homeschooling is that they have the freedom to be themselves and they don't mm -hmm. have to justify themselves. No. Um, yeah, they're just, I love it. Um, my son-in-law is in auto repair, so he paints cars and he's just like, there's never, I'm never going to work, run out of work ever. No. <laughs> no. And it's, it's my, my son is astonished at how much money he's making. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Um, so what's your favorite summer hobby? What do you do in the summer for fun? <laughs> oh, my favorite summer hobby is probably like, so we garden. Um, and I love the gardening. My daughter and I are master gardeners. But I think our favorite summer hobby is sitting in the garden <laughs> and reading a book. Or we we both um, we get our volunteer hours at the botanical gardens downtown, nice. and so she'll do artist in the garden, and so she'll sit there during the jazz concerts, and she's the art you know one of the artists in the garden doing live cool. um, pastel or painting um, there, and I love um, doing the tours and the um, the artisan guild. We're both in the artisan guild, so just. That's a fun like summer thing too because the gardens 
I mean, they're so much better than my gardens. So, <laughs> um, yeah. Hanging, yeah. So hanging out there and just seeing the beauty of it and being able to walk other people through and yeah. see their expressions on their face when they learn something, but they also just, it's so beautiful and calming yeah. and yeah. And yeah. Yeah. I, I love botanical gardens too. Um, Cheekwood Estates in Tennessee. Oh my goodness. Okay. Quick story about Cheekwood Estates. So um, the other thing I do during the summer is I travel around and I do this in the school year too, um, but I still teach. That's why I teach remotely because um, I support my younger siblings. So I have three younger siblings. My sister has kids the same age as me and she homeschooled all the way through single mom homeschooled all the way through. Wow. She's amazing. Yeah. Um, but my other two, uh, they had kids later in life, my two brothers. And so I travel around to help them with their kids and so they can get vacations and stuff like that. Nice. So I, I do that. So my brother is in Nashville uh -huh. and um, he and his wife went away for a week or so. And I was down there watching the girls. They are five and eight, nine. Fine. And um, Cheekwood is 10 minutes from their house because I have a membership at the botanical gardens here. I have a reciprocal membership. Guys get a membership yeah. um, at Cheekwood. So I get in free to yeah. Cheekwood. Nice. And so I took my niece thinking, if you like it, you know, we'll have fun. And if you yeah. don't, we'll never come back. Yeah. <laughs> she loved it so much. We went back that afternoon with her sister after I picked her sister up from school and they both loved it so much. We went every day. So every day, I drop one off at school, take the other to the gardens. We'd stay there like all day. And then we'd go pick up the other one and come back to the garden. Oh, I love it. <laughs> they loved it so much. And um, that the family ended up getting a membership there. But yeah. it just, that garden is so beautiful. And the last day was rainy. So we actually bought the, we went inside the house and looked yeah, at the garden. Yeah, which is amazing. It's so beautiful. Yeah, um, it is. The younger one had had enough. She's like, can we go outside now? Yeah. But um, the older one was fascinated by just everything within the house and the yeah. beauty of it all. It's stunning. If you guys can go to Cheekwood, go to Cheekwood. Yeah, go to Cheekwood. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love it too. It's such a neat place. Um, why did you decide to homeschool all those years ago? Um, I decided to homeschool because I wanted to isolate my children. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. And other people automatically assume you're just like, no, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> no, um, there was no pandemic at the time. Um, and so I, my husband and I chose to homeschool because my husband was in full-time ministry. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, we basically thought that he'd be in pastoral full-time ministry, like all of our lives. It just yeah. so happens that he transitioned a few years ago to full-time hospice chaplaincy, mm -hmm. which was a complete sideways God thing. We'd been yeah. looking for what God wanted and that happened. So that being said, when we were going into full-time ministry and wanting to have a family, uh, we knew that being in the ministry is a lot of work and it takes a lot of focus and a lot of hours that are rather odd. Yeah. Um, you know, every weekend is full of church yeah. activity, you know? So it's when, when you look at that and you look at a regular private or public school schedule, mm -hmm. um, you're not going to have much family time. Yeah. And you're not going to have much time to like, really help your kids with um, extracurriculars or hobbies. Mm -hmm. It's just the time's not going to be there. It's just a right. matter of time. Yeah. And uh, so we decided to homeschool early on so that we'd have more time as a family. Our kids would have more time for, um, we're, we're all musical, so we'd have more time for music um, lessons, music practice, music performance. Yeah. Um, and just... Uh, leisure and the classical meaning of leisure is not the same as uh, killing time. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. So, it's not necessarily amusement oriented. No, it's not amusement oriented, but leisure, uh, margin in your lives. We're yeah. not rushing from one thing to the next and harried mm -hmm. all the time. Uh, yeah. We really value contemplation and peace. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah. yeah, that was why we homeschooled. And honestly, it's so pragmatic, Tamara. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just too pragmatic. When they got to high school age and everything, um, my my middle son had friends that were dual enrolling at the local schools and doing yeah. football and all this stuff. And he was interested in that and was talking to his friends about it and like, oh, could I dual enroll? Could I do football? I was like, let's look at it. You know, I don't have a problem with that. And he just realized that's every day. Yeah. 
that's like every day and weekends. And he said, mm, nope, I don't, I just wanted to play. <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> he, he was content with homeschool football and, and just, you know, all the pickup scrimmage kind of things with friends and stuff. And he yeah. was so much happier. <laughs> Um, when he realized, child. <laughs> yeah, he, he was just like, mm, no, <laughs> too much time. <laughs> too much time. Yeah. Well, he didn't love it that much. Yeah. Right. You know, and I think, I think that's one of the things when you're homeschool, you have a little bit more freedom <laughs> to yeah. love things, the amount of time you actually love them. Yeah. Instead of having to, it. you know, to like sign your life away just to get an experience. <laughs> Right, exactly. And and then you get more opportunity to do many things. Yes. I mean, yeah, it's it's a good way to raise your family. Um, you've taught for True North. How long? I was, I, I've was i been trying to count up everybody that I've been interviewing, but I, I'm losing track. <laughs> you contacted me. Here's yeah. the funny thing. I got contacted by you, I think, before the pandemic started. We were in conversations. Really? Yeah. And then the pandemic hit. Yeah. Um, but I was already going to be, so it started in 2020, but oh, that was, was it in 2020. Okay. Yeah, it was 2020, but it was prior to pandemic. So we might've been talking in 2019. Yeah. Maybe. In the fall. I'm not sure. Um, I, mean, we can I was go back so thrilled. You were willing, we've known each other for quite a while, but then oh, yeah. I was so thrilled you were willing to teach online because you are just, you just know such a wide variety of things very well, but you know how to ask really good questions and challenge kids and help them to think critically about any subject matter. And, and that's really a true gift. I mean, you really have that gift of drawing the best out of the students. And so I was, I was thrilled that you could come teach for True North. <laughs> I remember what it was. My, my daughter was graduating. So I was, okay. I yeah. was available. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's funny how that happens. <laughs> <laughs> when your kids go into the next thing, all of a sudden your time changes so much. <laughs> yeah, I had a 2020 graduate. So, <laughs> wow, yeah, the, the, it seems like it wasn't that far away, and it seems like it was like years and years ago. It's yeah, yeah. back when we met when she was young enough to sit under the tables at the homeschool conference and yeah. hide during the sessions while we were all chatting with all the other vendors. <laughs> yeah, crazy, crazy. Okay, so what are you teaching this year? I you're teaching Latin one again, and I'm thrilled. Yeah. Yeah, I got Latin one. And so for those who are looking at it, we are doing first form Latin. Yeah. Latin one. Um, that is through Memoria Press. It's just an amazing program. If you have wow. questions about it, please ask me. Um, so I I've love, got, I love the forms. I love I the forms. So they didn't exist when my kids were growing up, but I've watched mm -hmm. them grow and, and I've taught the forms both in person and mm -hmm. online. I love the forms. Yeah, I do too. I think the thing I like about it, I, I've had some questions. We were in great homeschool conventions in Texas and several people came up and said, we've been using Henley and we're just suffering through it. And we did Henley. We actually did part of Henley too. And a friend of mine said this, she said, Henley is archaic and it was written. It was really written by Father Henley over a hundred years ago for people who went to Latin mass several times a week. So they had this milieu of Latin in their, in their head. And we don't have that. Um, even if you are Catholic, you're probably not going to mass in Latin three or four times a week. So it's, you're just on the struggle bus with Henley right off because he's assuming a body of knowledge most of us don't have. And I love the forms because Lilo and her brilliance, she's just like, let's make this simple and straightforward. You're going to learn 300 vocabulary words a year. You're going to learn some phrases. You're going to contextualize it in a simple way. And we're going to teach you grammar. And it's so it's just so straightforward. And we've had kids who started in fifth grade with first form and went all the way through Latin form with us at True Northam School Academy. And they didn't even break a sweat. They just totally got it. They loved it. And and a lot of them did for uh, modern language at the same time once they were in Latin three and four. We've had several students who've done Latin and Hebrew at the same time. So it's really an accessible program, especially with a teacher who knows it and loves it like you. Um, I do love it. <laughs> I do too. I love, I, I never, I, I felt confident teaching Latin one. And after that, my confidence waned greatly. So I always pass that off to somebody else who had more confidence than I did. <laughs> Well, with those forms, it's certainly a lot more helpful because yeah. it's it's so incremental and yeah. it's almost, honestly, it's almost like it's a game. Yeah. It's a puzzle that you do yeah. every single week. I mean, you're doing it for a little bit every single day, but it's um, it's yeah. just so systematic and laid out for you. Um, yeah. You're you're just, you do the work and you're learning. Yeah, exactly. You just do it. 
I will say, honestly, I really, I truly believe it's worth the money to pay for somebody who knows Latin a little bit. We tried it. We tried the forms years and years ago before I really got a hold of Latin. And it was really, I honestly, we were on a struggle bus because we weren't really sure what to focus on. And I think that's the beauty of having a teacher. They can help your student know what to focus on and what's important And because there's so many moving parts with Latin. I mean, um, but once you learn Latin, you know how to learn a foreign language. And also mm -hmm. you've built your critical thinking skills um, and your communication skills. Um, and the other thing I don't think a lot of people realize, we speak 15,000 anglicized Latin words. So when I was teaching Latin, I started the first day going, you guys know more Latin than you ever thought possible, like probably thousands of words at this point. So um, that took some pressure off of them, maybe I hope. Uh, but yeah, it's a great program. And you're such a good teacher. I mean, you love the classics. You have a, did you get your degree in classical studies? I, I am almost finished with my master's degree. Yes. Wow. Awesome. Was it fun? I am not looking forward to the day when I finish because then I'll be finished. Uh, <laughs> I want to keep learning. PhD. So I'm having to look at the next step, which my poor husband, we just, we were on a walk um, the other day and I said, so about the PhD. <laughs> I love it. You're just like, can we pause? No, actually, it's it's great. But um, yeah, I just, it's learning all of this is just so eye-opening and so soul enlarging. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. And yeah. and really, Latin, Latin helps with critical thinking skills. Yeah. Latin helps you know your own language because you are not speaking it. Um, it's, some people call it a dead language, but my, one of my favorite quotes here, um, is G.K. Chesterton, and he said this concerning Latin. It was his quick retort to somebody, and it's every living language is a dying language. Parts of it are perpetually perishing or changing their sense. There's only one escape from that flux, and the language must die to be immortal. And he said that about Latin. So wow. yes, it's dead, but it's immortal because yeah. now it is not changing. Yeah, and it is so organized and so um, precise that it makes for great critical thinking skills and logic skills. And um, uh, as you said before, the basis of language, like learning this mm -hmm. helps you learn other languages, but it also is, it's the easiest way to learn English grammar. Yes, it is. I totally agree. <laughs> oh, totally agree. yes. Yeah. Um, I think this class pairs really nicely with the informal and formal logic. Uh, because, it, and look, if your kids are, in, if they're hitting junior high, they're going to argue with you anyway. So give them the tools to argue well. Um, it's kind of a joke, but also really think about that. <laughs> well, the joke is that they will actually know how to argue well and without emotion and just stand there and yeah. you will feel stupid. Yeah. So <laughs> take the logic classes with them. So take the logic class too, or just, you know, hone up your skills. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yep, exactly. Exactly. Um, with the Latin, you are teaching the ancient Roman and national Latin exam pre test prep. And I want to, we decided to com, um, combine NLE test prep with this new class because the test is in like February or March. Mm -hmm. So we always offered this as like a September through March class. And then we were doing it every other week and it just got confusing. And we thought, why not offer a classics class with the NLE test prep? You don't have to take the NLE test or be in Latin mm -hmm. to do it. You're going to, mm -hmm. because look, the, one of the reasons why the language is so precise is because uh, the ancient Romans were a military state. And so they had precision down to an art form. And that's one of the things um, I think just studying their culture is so helpful for is just to understand why they were a world leader for so long. Why would, why we're still, you know, like if you go to Washington, DC, you see, you see um, a lot of the architecture is based on Roman culture and our government and all those kind of things. Why was it such a powerhouse for thousands of years? And I think doing ancient studies really gives your kids an idea about that. And and obviously it contextualizes the language of Latin. Um, so they don't have to be doing the NLE test to take this class, um, but it'll help them understand it both ways. And by the way, if your kid is taking Latin, have them take the NLE because it's such an easy test to put on the transcript. Colleges love Latin. They love the NLE. And if they don't do well, just leave it off. It's it's a win-win. <laughs> yeah, it's easy. So, and for the class, um, whether or not they're taking the test 
and whatever they score in the test does not affect their grade in the class or their ability to earn a credit in the class. The class is a standalone. Yeah. And um, basically you do the work, you get the credit, you get a great grade. Yeah. Um, so it's um, you're going to be learning. So say you're not even taking Latin, you're going to be learning some basics of Latin. And for you, it'll be more memory work than contextual work. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not going to be heaped upon you. Yeah. Um, it's more about the classical studies because the what happens when you're taking the, the Latin classes through first form, yeah. they do not emphasize the classical Roman studies or ancient Roman history because if you were in the Memoria, Memoria Press system or the Highlands Latin School system, you're getting that as a separate right. class. Yeah. And so um, those students are fully prepared to take the National Latin exam. Um, but for our students, if they're if they're only in first, second form, you know, whatever level of Latin they're in and whatever level of test they're taking, they're only getting the Latin part mm -hmm. of that. They're not getting the full immersion into the Roman history, um, the geography, the basic household structure mm -hmm. and political structure or the mythology. And um, because that that's not there. It's like little tiny bits of it will be here and there scattered as part of mm -hmm. vocabulary or something, but not the the full context of it. Yeah. And so that's why the, the class from being a national Latin exam test prep um, to be able to expand it to a full credit class is actually really easy because now it's just filled with mm -hmm. that ancient Roman studies. So we'll be hitting on the main things that the students need to know, like the Aeneid um, and mm -hmm your the 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 household stuff the geography yeah. the the famous men of rome that you need to know as well as um characters in mythology and mm -hmm. basic stories in mythology that are pertinent to the roman culture and history yeah i um we we studied the nle and um i say we because i was the i was the coach but mm -hmm. you know you learn a lot when you're when you're helping somebody else do it and it is such a fascinating look at history it's such a great way to understand the great conversation um, throughout time. I mean, again, the Roman culture is still influencing us today. So they're going to learn phrases and geography and um, even some architecture, um, just how the houses were put together, um, the famous men. Uh, what are you using for the text on this? Are you providing materials for students? Um, I printed what my class description was. So I could remind myself what I said, because of course I have more books than what I'm expecting them to have. <laughs> it's like pulling my books like going, I didn't tell them to get all these books. Um, so for um, the required materials are Dorothy Mills' Book of Ancient Romans. So good. I love and, that. And this looks thick and heavy, but look, the print is ginormous. This is, <laughs> this is not like a, a hard read at all. This is very easy read. Um, this is a great read aloud, by the way, if you want yes. to do this as a family study. Um, the National Latin Exam Guide. Okay, this here um, is the level two which I list here, level two, yeah. Um, which is listed in my um, class description. You really want to get level two because this incorporates um, study prep for all levels of the test. Yeah. So if your student is just, just taking introductory or something, it has it. So you can see these, these colors. These are for different levels of the test. Yeah. So um, that, that level two will save you some money in the long run. Um, I'm expecting them to get the Aeneid graphic novel. I'm not expecting them to read the Aeneid. If you want your children to read the Aeneid, there is a, uh, fall over. Where did I put it? <laughs> oh, here it is. It was right next to me. I did pull it up. There's okay. the Aeneid for boys and girls. Okay. The Aeneid. Yeah. Um, you know how there's in the Bible, uh stories that you don't read aloud to your children yeah lot and his daughters for instance yeah um you know maybe samson some mm -hmm. little bits of that you don't want to explain everything there's there's that in the aeneid okay yeah. um ancient history just has stuff yeah um so uh i mean even in shakespeare there's stuff you have to explain exactly right <laughs> uh, fairy tales like actual the way right. they were written you know that kind of thing um so the aeneid has things and um, and so the Aeneid for Boys and Girls kind of edits that out, which would be fully appropriate for them to have high school and up yeah. level because you need to be talking about these kinds of things because it's actually real life. Yeah. But um, this one is the one where that I'll be um, 
kind of using in class, but the one I wanted them to read at home because I thought it would be helpful to see the pictures too. Yeah. Obviously, people don't look like manga characters yeah. <laughs> in real life. We we all get that. But it's just, it's it's illustrated, which is going to be helpful. I know that's yeah. kind of scary, but um, you know these are older kids, middle yeah. school and high school. So, <laughs> um, But the graphic novel is much more approachable. So for your kids that want to reach beyond, they can read the Aeneid um, or the Aeneid for Boys and Girls or, I mean, Alfred, there's there's a lot of people that have an Aeneid for boys yeah. and girls, so you can yeah. you can use those. Um, but in class, it's the graphic novel. And then, um, yeah, that's it. Okay. So it's it's the Book of Ancient Romans, the National Latin Exam Guide, and then the mm -hmm. this one, and then this one is recommended. Yeah. So the rest of it, I'll be providing in class. Um, like this here has all the maps and how. So this has yeah. a ton. Like a lot of cultural stuff is already in here. So that's yeah. why I don't need a ton of, yeah. of other materials to cover what we need to cover in class. And I can bring those to yeah. the class. Um, fun. I think it's going to be a really fun class. I think if you have kids who are history buffs or they just love ancient culture, this is going to be a super fun class for them to get or really if they deep. they don't know their history buffs and you need them to get some history, this might ignite a desire to learn more because it's just so fascinating. Yeah. And it's not a ton of reading. I kind of like that. Like for the kids who are like, yeah, they want to hear the stories and they want to know what it's about, but they don't want to be like buried in five books for the year. This is a great class, a really great class. So super excited to be offering this. And of course, if you want your kids to do the NLE test prep, it's baked in. And if you want them to just have a really good ancient history class, this is it. Um, so super excited to be offering this. This is new to us this year. Of course, we've done the NLE test prep for a couple of years and our kids have done great on it. Honestly, yeah. they've, they've really rocked and rolled on the test, which yep. again, looks great on the transcript. Okay, you are also doing Old Testament and New Testament overview this year. These are half credit. Are you? Yep. Oh, that's what I thought. I thought you shook your head and I'm like, oh, you're not? Okay, so. <laughs> oh, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I just paused for a minute. Okay, Old Testament, New Testament overview. And these are half credit classes. These are survey classes. So, um, and we, we offer them at the junior high level, but we often have um, ninth graders in these classes and they're really good classes to get your kids an idea about what's going on in both the Old and the New Testament. Um, I think biblical literacy is really waning in America, and I think I can substantiate that with several anecdotal and actual um, stats going on right now. And so really, it used to be that a well-educated person just really understood the Bible, whether they were mm -hmm. a Christian or not. It just yes. was like common knowledge. And so- Ancient history. Ancient history. Exactly. Right. So these are great survey classes for your kids to get an overarching idea of what's happening in both the Old Testament and New Testament. Um, and they go, the classes go pretty quickly, but they create a notebook, right? Is that what you're doing this year with them? Yeah, it's going to be notebook and project based. Um, so they're not reading through the entire Bible. Right, right. <laughs> you know, most adults can't have, well, they can, but yeah. most adults don't do that. And we're yeah. not expecting our children to do that at the, you know, because this is a middle school class. So yeah. if, if they want to, more power to them. I've read it multiple times. So I, I'm not saying people can't. I have. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, and I would hope you'd expect me to have yeah. read it. <laughs> um, but uh, the book we're using, there are um, different editions of it. And I just want to give you a heads up. Um, this I think is like more the first printing mm -hmm. and this one's good. Okay. Yeah. Most of the content is exactly the same. It's just, there's a few ways that the layout is a little different and they've combined some things into different areas. And I'm working my way through to make sure I've got page numbers for both, or at least I can help the students. If anybody has this one pricing yeah. online is about the same for it. It's just, I think yeah. sometimes you might not know which one you're getting when it arrives. Yeah. Um, but if you can get the one with the white cover, go go for this one. It's newer. Um, and it's the one that has the the different things combined that like the introductory comments and things like that. Okay. Um, but this this book here, regardless of the the childish cover, mm -hmm. um, yeah, this is an amazing book, and I want to show you a few things about it. so it's it's a big, thick book. But it's full of illustrations that are just black and white illustrations that help walk, keep your interest, but also help walk you through how the Bible is organized. So we're talking about the Bible as, um, you know, God's word to us, but we're also talking about it as literature, as as, yeah. a, as stories within a larger story, yeah. um, as the context of the people 
that not only wrote it, but the people that lived it and where right. all of this comes from. So we're, we're looking at the basics of just how these books are organized. Yeah. Okay. I love it. Yes. So it, it truly is a survey of the content. And so you can see how it's laid out. So they're not reading just a summary. They're reading a summary with illustrations of maps and locations and people. Yeah. And then in the book, there are, let me try and find, they do have some pictures. Now we'll be doing some things where they can find stuff online for more modern pictures. Yeah. Um, but this, this takes them through every single book. It has the maps. I love um, it. It's, it's yeah. all contained within the one book. This is just a wonderful book. This is our core text um, and other things will be research-based, but they're going to find everything they need within that book. Yeah. And it's, they're going to gain just this wonderful overview of, yeah. of how scripture is laid out and what to expect. Um, mm -hmm. I would love for them to memorize the books of the Bible in order. Yeah. I'm going to teach them a little song to do that. Um, but uh, they're not going to have to. But yeah. it, it's just this is going to be something that's going to be so helpful to them in yeah. their, their future walk with God. But even for ones that, um, depending on your denomination and your religious background, uh, this is very, very helpful for history and literature as well, because mm -hmm. people make references all the time to scripture. Shakespeare exactly. has so many references to scripture. Yeah. Modern authors have so exactly. many references to scripture. If you don't know what they're, then you completely miss. Yeah. I was reading, um, trying to find the book. It's in my pile right here because I just got back from seminar. <laughs> there she goes again. I know, my books. Um <laughs> Where did it go? Is Isaac Denison? Here it is. Okay, read a short story from here and we discussed it. Guess what? This short story in here, we were discussing the pearls, okay? Mm -hmm. This short story, um, if you have read scripture and yeah. caught on to a few things, um, has a complete a level of meaning that you would completely miss if you don't know the symbolism of scripture. Wow. Very, very cool. Now it's not like these kids are going to learn all the symbolism of scripture yeah. <laughs> in our one there. year survey <laughs> because right. it's two semesters. They can sign up for both either or, oh, yeah. or both classes. Yeah. Um, but just as an example here, it's yeah. you, you miss things because you yeah. don't understand the context, whether or yeah. not your believer does, I mean, matters in the long run, but doesn't yeah. matter when you're reading this short story exactly. and understanding what she was trying to communicate with yeah. those images. Exactly. I, I don't know if you've been following, like my husband's a big archaeology buff and some of the archaeology discoveries of the last month have been like blowing us away. I mean, really history is, is revealing that the scriptures are true that they actually happened. They're nailing down the time frame more and more. I mean, it is just, it is pretty amazing what's going on with some of the discoveries in archaeology today regarding history and that they're really verifying the truth of scripture. And like I say, I, I say this all the time, like the Flat Earth Society is growing by leaps and bounds. Um, they meet every year in New York and there's thousands of people who meet there. And the transhumanists are meeting every year in California and there's thousands and thousands of going. So our kids are gonna grow up and live and work in this smash up of medieval thought and sci-fi and we need to get them grounded in truth. And this is a great way to do it. Just understanding what God's word is to us. It's true. It's verifiable. Um, and how they can move on in life with feet firmly planted. I mean, that is really part of the goal of education really is to transmit a culture of truth, beauty, and goodness. And this is a great place to start. Um, yeah. So, so many alliterations. Uh, is that the right word? Um to illusions? Allu il yeah, illusions to scripture. Yeah. Um, uh, throughout history uh, or throughout literature. So it's a great um, way to get your kids set up for understanding high school literature um, and all the things. Great, great class. And again, you can buy them as standalones. You can just do Old Testament for fall or New Testament for spring, or you can take a book for both. So you might as well do both. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. And this Old Testament survey is different than Rabbi Fisher's um, Old Testament, Adam to Nehemiah. That's more at a high school level class. It's a really deep dive into scripture. Um, the kids will be reading a lot of the Bible in that class. So it's just at a different level of depth. But this is a survey, an overview kind of class, but really good. Your kids need this. Um, 
especially as they go into high school to understand history and literature and all those things. And Tamara, you're just such a great educator. You understand things in a deep way and you share that in a way that's accessible, um, which is really the hallmark of a great educator. You understand the depth, but can explain it at a lower, at a shallower level for those of us who aren't quite there yet. So <laughs> hopefully, am I teaching logic this year? Yes. Are you? Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes, you are. <laughs> Let's talk about logic. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, I'm I'm filling in. I'm yeah. filling in. So this is Father Walker's class. Yeah. Well, he's <laughs> he needs he needs the year of because he's got a thing he has to do. Yes, I'm so glad you mentioned that because honestly, informal logic too has been always one of our very most popular classes. Like in fact, most years it's filled up first and then Dr. Moon got on board and now she's like, I'm, biology is going to make it to the first full class, which she did make it this year. Um, but the informal logic is super popular too. And so tell us a little bit about that class. Um, this is if you want to equip your kids well to argue with you and uh, and point out every fallacy you've ever made in life. They will be right. happy to do so when, once they're armed with this class. <laughs> Right. We did hit on that just a little bit ago. Yeah. Okay. So we're using um, Art of Argument yeah. and the um, Argument Builder. These are the teacher's editions. So yeah. the cover you're looking for is this one. Now, here's the thing about the Art of Argument. I'm really sorry. This is confusing. It's a new edition. Oh, and you yeah. absolutely, we talked about this. You absolutely yes. have to get the brand new edition. Yeah. It's too different from the old one, which I know is going to be all over the place used. Yes. So, <laughs> because yeah. everyone's getting rid of it. Um, don't, don't do that. It's too different. Um, so I had to go with the new, otherwise I would have to require all my students to find an old yeah. version of it. And that's, it's too much to do. So yes. um, we're going with the new version and it's too different. You can't have a kid in the class using an old book. Yeah. So um, I contacted classical academic press about this and they they sent me a sample to help me you know kind of nice. guide me through everything so i just want to let you know the argument builder it's the same book so yeah. no worries about this one um the same book that they that they've had in the past so i do apologize but they they had some updates yep. it's been years since they did it so yeah it was just one of those things that needed to be done so yeah. that's for informal logic and um the study of logic is a study of things that make um, it's kind of obvious, but it's like we have a lot of assumptions in life where we just assume things. We assume yeah. I'm going to wake up, my feet are going to hit the floor. Yeah, exactly. There's a reason for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of, I think, what we might think is science. Um, actually, there's some logic to that. Yeah. Um, and so we're not going to be doing experiments or anything, but we are going to be working with syllogisms and understanding mm -hmm. logical thought processes, mm -hmm. which is what really helps when it comes to discerning truth from um, non-reality or non-truth yeah. right. um, and, and, and figuring out the orders of someone who's trying to persuade you towards something, yeah. you can discern, you know, how this works. And that's where it also works within family communications. It's mm -hmm. understanding, okay, this is what I'm trying to communicate. And this is the order in which it makes sense to me. Yeah. Um, and knowing that I might be experiment, I might be throwing out fallacies and listening to somebody else and what they're trying to say. So it's also about communication. But yes. as far as logic, it is, it's actually um, very applicable. So I'm going to give you one way that this could be applicable in someone's life. So um, the premise, and I'm reading from my notes here, the premise is um, whoever would be a good match for Juliet would not ruin her life. Okay, ah. Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. Yeah. Whoever would be a good match for Juliet would not ruin her life. Mm. Okay makes sense yeah. Yeah. Romeo will ruin her life we know this yes <laughs> yeah, we've read it <laughs> we've read it we know this Romeo will ruin her life conclusion therefore Romeo must not really be a good match for Julia mm -hmm. yeah okay so um it's things like that and we could what's really fun is we could argue that I mean some yeah. of you might want to really take me to task on that one because I would this is oversimplified and we yes. might want to decide whether or not those premise is really true or yes. not the first one uh, would, yeah, be true, yeah. but you might want to define your terms and, and really yeah. dive in. So what this is about is helping students understand the logic of yeah. how, how to order your arguments, how to discover if something is true or not, how to define your terms. Yeah. And we really break things down into simplification. What helps with logic is students beginning to understand um, 
the world is a lot bigger than they thought. Mm -hmm. um, things can be explained that they thought were not explainable. Um, but also it brings a, a level of humility yeah. that, that at this age, they, t they tend to struggle with, um, yeah. because they're, they're, they're questioning everything. And then they're moving into this idea of, I know more than I thought I did, or I know more than, you know, or yeah. I see the flaws in you, um, because they're starting to finally see that their parents aren't perfect and mm -hmm. you know, the world right. isn't perfect and they can get really depressed and anxious and, and struggle, yeah. um, during right. those years. And logic is not the solution to all of that. Jesus yes. is. Um, but logic can help their thinking processes. Exactly. Yeah. Help, right. It can help them think through. And the humility that comes with something like that is the humility to not engage yeah. like, with ridiculous social media arguments. Right. Like that is not even, that is, that's not logical. I, it's not worth my time. Yeah. Starting to recognize that there's a lot going on that doesn't even need to be addressed. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Proverbs, Solomon talks about this in Proverbs is a, even a fool knows when to be silent. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> or if a fool is silent, people think they're smarter than they are. It's just the idea of this is going to teach us to just be quiet sometimes. Yeah, exactly. The other thing too, it just sets your kids up so well for upper level writing and speaking. Mm -hmm. Oh and goodness. Yes. Persuasive argumentation and writing. And those are two things that are extremely needed it, in the absolutely. workforce. If, you, if you've got to communicate your your project or your idea to somebody or your marketing yeah. um you you have to have logic you do you do and it's so helpful i just did a whole series on elementary school and literacy has to do with reading writing speaking and hearing and so that that's really like are you literate can you speak and can you hear well and so this is just the next level of that as your kids move into junior high i think we've had kids as young as maybe sixth grade take uh, informal logic but it's a great class for seventh and eighth graders even and of course we have the formal logic um or ninth graders if they haven't had logic before because it sets them up so well for what they're going to be doing in high school you know they're going to be really wrestling with bigger ideas and getting more in depth into into different things. So it's it's just such a great foundational class, I think. Everybody needs to have a logic class or two under their belt. Oh yes. And it um it's it's easily put on a transcript. It's easily, yeah. You you might not have heard of it before yeah. <laughs> as a class, but probably you got a little bit of logic maybe in your geometry or trigonometry classes. Yeah. They put like in sets and subsets. There's different ways that it gets kind of tossed into some math curriculums, but yeah. not um but not fully and completely articulated. And, yeah. and the students don't know that that's logical thought. Exactly. Um, it's right. just, they're like, that was an easy math problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it out. But yeah. You, this can definitely go under electives. And again, it looks great on a transcript. Um, yeah. So if that's a concern for you, like how to beef up the transcript, putting a logic class or two on it can really, you know, definitely. make your kid a little bit more marketable, you know, in the, in the college application process. Um, but I, I love this class. I think it's really important. Um, and we're seeing obviously the fruits of people not understanding logical argument in, in our culture and in the world today. I mean, um, it, and again, this class goes really well with the other classes you're teaching. Again, you're a classicist. So <laughs> this is where you live. I love this it. I love it. <laughs> yeah, this is where you live. Anything else you want to share about logic? Um, why, why should people take it? It might seem like an extraneous class, but honestly, the four C's of, of education right now are communication, critical thinking, collaboration, and creativity. And understanding logic helps your kids communicate better, um, helps them um, critically think better. But the other thing it helps them is in creativity, because if you understand logic, um, that's that's one of the things I've taught creative writing for a long time. People think it's just like this free flow of whatever your thoughts are, but really, really succinct creative writing means that you've got, you just got the logic down tight and you're able to make those word pictures so beautifully in a really concise way. And logic really helps with that. So if you have somebody who wants to be like a professional writer or speaker or anything like that, absolutely. Oh, a logic right. class. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, they should take some logic. Yeah, for and sure. And these are these are your lower level logic classes. These are yeah. very approachable. These are not yeah. higher level. Um, yeah, really. These, <laughs> these are approachable. Yeah. These well, are the classes you want to take. And um, honestly, I think the kids think logic is fun. 
I, I really yeah, do. do. When I've taught logic, the kids have loved it. I mean, there's always a couple superstars um, that just like yeah. get a hold of it and they could actually teach the class. And sometimes I ask them for help on stuff. But uh, most of the kids think it's just such a fun game. And they're looking, they're look. you know, at, at junior high, kids are kind of trying to figure out like, what thing is real? You know, they're moving from concrete to abstract. So they're trying to figure out what really can they count on? Again, a really great foundational class for them, just developmentally. Yeah, it's a it's a really good class. It's a really good um, skill to have as we able to think logically. And it applies to your other studies. It definitely yeah. applies to math, but it also applies to your argumentation, your rhetoric, yeah. um, being able to communicate with other people, mm -hmm. being able to order your thoughts. Yeah. Um, or to think about it, just to order your day. What should I do first? What follows right. what? Yes. Getting that in their head and getting them to think that way is mm -hmm. is just so helpful. Yeah, exactly. What are you going to try to get done before the end of summer? Do you have any big plans? Well, I'm going to go watch my niece in Chicago one more time. Fun. And before summer, my garden. Uh, I, I'm taking I'm taking a classical pedagogy class right now with Memorial mm -hmm. College, so I'll get through that. <clears throat> Trying to think. Practically, I'd like to get the stuff put away from the thing I was at last week before <laughs> I leave next week. Right, right. I am, you know, that that kind of thing. Um, the class yeah. prep, all those, just the practical things. But as far as fun, I'm already having it. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, um, just every day in the studying and being with my family and visiting family and friends is delightful. Um, it's... Um, I would say for anybody who is, you know, considering homeschooling or maybe you're in the throes of it and maybe you're not looking forward to this coming year, <laughs> you're anxious about it. Um, as a homeschooling parent, homeschooling does have its very difficult moments, mm -hmm. but the goal is, of course, to educate your children. <laughs> you want them educated. Um, I wanted my kids educated, and they are educated, so I'm happy about that. But the other goal is is bigger than just education because you're not just their teacher, you're their parent. Mm -hmm. And so it's about parenting through all of that and modeling. It's just that discipleship mm -hmm. of, of life. It's modeling life. And so if I just take a step back and breathe mm -hmm. and think about my relationships mm -hmm. and the goal of that mm -hmm. and then that takes front and center and yeah. i don't want i didn't want my children to come back and be upset that i didn't make them do the things that they should do mm -hmm. um that i gave them an easy way out or i made excuses um yeah. and oh sorry you don't know math you just didn't want to so i didn't make you mm -hmm. yeah you know I, I i didn't want to do that i wanted to say you know this is what we're doing <laughs> um, and, and get them through it. But, you know, I would have to model it. Like these are hard things. Mm -hmm. It's hard for me to teach and it's hard for them to learn. Yeah. And no, acknowledging that it is difficult. That's part of logic. I think is just yeah. it is difficult. Let's own it. This right. is difficult. And yet we embrace it and we go through it because it's good for us. Mm -hmm. And um, so choosing to spend time together, choosing to study together, choosing to learn together and, and very carefully putting together the day so that it's yeah. not too much. Right. Um, we're not rushing. We have time for peace and leisure and contemplation. We take our Sabbaths. Mm -hmm. um, those things are so important. And so it's about looking at it very holistically mm -hmm. and, and, and knowing that the, the when, when it gets tough, you do the things that need to be done, but in such a way that the relationship is not damaged. Mm -hmm. And if it is, go back and fix it. Yeah. Because I that's so important. It is. I, I love how you're, you're really, um, you know, you hear so much in the homeschool world of if your kid's struggling with the lesson, put the lesson away and focus on character. And to me, that's a false dichotomy of either or. Because yeah. it can be both and, and that's what you're really talking about is casting a vision of education for your kids that when you're studying hard things like Latin or logic or math or literature and really doing a deep dive, it can be a struggle. And telling our kids that they never have to struggle is really doing them a disservice, disservice that you do build a lot of character by struggling through and wrestling through and getting to the other side. And then your kids have that deep sense of fulfillment of 
I did that hard thing. I can do another hard thing. I remember when I was in eighth grade, I learned how to do an inverse dive. And that's where you, you jump off the diving board backwards and then dive in towards the dive diving board. And I practiced and practiced and practiced. I wish I had a video of it because now I'm like, I actually did that thing, but it just gave me so much. Cur- and I, I really had to work on it because it was a mental thing. You, mm-hmm. you jump backwards and dive in towards the diving board. Um, and, but I think a lot of education is like that. You have to get your mind in the right spot of, I just have to practice. I just have to work hard. And that's a good thing. Cause at the end yeah. you've accomplished something amazing Mm-hmm. And if we can give our kids that great gift that we've educated them in so many different ways by doing that. So thanks for bringing yeah. that up. I think that's really, that's a great word for parents. Um, if you guys are struggling with how to even, how to even homeschool this year or getting started, or you're not even sure you're on the fence, we'd love to chat with you. The other thing Tamara pulled us for True North is she does academic advising and coaching with families. <laughs> yeah. And, and, um, it, and honestly, it's, it's one of the things I love to do and I'm not doing so much of it, but Tamara is such a great person to hang out with and talk to. And one of the things I, I'm really happy that we focus on with our academic advising and counseling um, and coaching at True North Homeschool Academy is it's not just a sales job to buy our classes. Yep. I mean, of course, we want you to buy our classes. We have great classes to buy, but they might not be the best fit for you. And what we do is we sit down and we get to know you and your student. What are your resources? What is your, um, what's your, you know, amount of money you have for this year? Where do you want to be at the end of the year? And where do you want to be at the end of this season of homeschooling, whether it's junior high or high school? How is the best, most expedient, most godly, kind, loving way to get there? That's our goal. Um, And we'd love to walk alongside you on that journey. Um, I love chatting with parents and just Mm -hmm. doing that academic counseling kind of thing. And Tamara, I know you do too with your years of homeschooling. Yeah, it's it's a blessing to us too, because we love hearing your stories. Um, We love, I mean, homeschoolers do such unique, crazy, creative, amazing things. (laughs) And it's inspiring to us. Um, to get to hear what you guys are doing and how you're educating kids. Um, and, and the world needs your kids. Um, they need kids who are creative and doing those amazing, crazy, wonderful things. So thanks for, thanks for, you know, the sacrifices you're making as you homeschool. Um, Oh, Tamara, it's always so fun to talk to you. Um, you're you. very inspiring in every way. And I love how much you love and are passionate about education and just, um, the joy of it, um, really makes my heart happy. <laughs> Thank you. And thanks for leading True North. You do such a lovely job with all of the administration. Oh, thank you. <laughs> communication. I know that's difficult. And you you keep it all together and keep this machine running smoothly for everyone. And you have such a heart for parents that um, Lisa really works hard to put together just the right classes and teachers and basically a lovely menu <laughs> yeah, for thanks. everyone to choose from and does a great job with that. So check out thanks. True North. Yeah, check out True North. Okay, you guys, you can um, ask any questions you have about any of these classes or others here or head on over to Homeschooling Looks Like Tribe. If you want to talk to parents who have taken our classes or talk to the teachers directly there, we'd love to chat with you over there. Um, Enroll today because classes are filling up. Um, At least one section of biology is full and another one is on its way. Informal logic is getting full um, and there's other Spanish one. So there's others if you have a certain section or time in mind. Um, don't put it off. All right, you guys, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Tamara. Thanks.